Hi, everyone. Welcome to the latest Facts versus Feelings, Take 5 with Ryan and Sonu. We're going to title this one, The Worst Month of the Year. Now, before we get there, Sonu, can you guess where I am? Where do you think I am? Oh, I see a lot of tall buildings uh, and only one place in the world, right? Unless you're in Tokyo, but New York City. Uh, if I'm in Tokyo, I'm in trouble. No, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from New York City for this one. Um, again, it, it's 92 degrees in New York City right now. So they tell us fall is here, but not quite yet. But so that's what we want to talk about in this week's Take 5. We're going to focus on September. So had you heard that it's the worst month of the year on average? It's been out there. Have you heard I, that yet? <laughs> I have. And it seems like it's the only thing out there. Yes, it, we're hearing a lot. So I'll kind of start this conversation. It is true. September for stocks is not a very good month since 1950. Worst month on average. Last 10 years, last 20 years, again, the worst month. And then, hey, pre-election years where we are, September is the worst, worst month. But so now here's what I thought was fascinating. We looked at it. Some of those worst drops ever took place in years that were already down a lot. Think last year. We were down significantly last year going into September. Then the wheels fell off. We fell almost 9%. So now going back 50 years, when you're down 10% for the year, going into the normally weak September, which again, not the scenario this year, September has fallen anywhere between 8 and 11% every single time. That's five times. Really big drops. Now, you didn't see this coming. Do you have any reason? Why is it September gets really bad when we're going into a bad September? Because I'm not even sure. That's why I'm asking you. Why do you think that is? It's like, it, it seems like a lot of bad news just comes, you know, everyone comes back after summer and maybe they're just depressed after summer, <laughs> after a nice summer holiday, vacation. Labor Day, all of that. I feel that too. But no, I, I think, uh, you know, some of the momentum from earlier in the year, it takes time for, you know, there's some consolidation that happens. And, you know, your numbers just tell me that momentum begets momentum, right? If the year has gone well through yep. August, it seems like September is okay. And the other way around. If the year has gone yeah. terrible, September just makes it worse. Exactly. And honestly, the last two years, right, we had a big rally two years ago, obviously not last year. September was lower. But here's what's interesting to me. Again, when you're up now, we're going to flip it around. When you're up 10 percent for the year going into September, like we are this year, but you have some seasonal weakness in August like we had. So it's happened 10 times since 1950. September has been higher eight out of 10 times under that scenario. But here's the real one. I think everyone needs to really understand. The rest of the year, when you're up again, up 10% going into September, but down in August, the rest of the year has been higher 10 out of 10 times, up nearly 10% on average, which would put us right at all time highs, which is something we still think on the Carson Investor Research team is quite possible. So believe me, September can be volatile, but we might be able to buck that trend this year. Now, here's Sona, girl, you talk for a little bit. One of the other things we like is the economy. What we're hearing, though, is things are slowing down. Things are slowing down. You want to talk about the idea of ver slowing down or normalizing versus slowing down? Yeah, I think it's easy to confuse normalization with slowing down or, you know, all being on the verge of a recession, right? And I think the jobs report kind of hammered that home. Look, the economy created 187,000 jobs in August. That was above expectations. And these numbers can be volatile, right? That means, that's why we look at a three-month average. That's running at 150,000. Uh, that slowed down from the previous six months, right? You look at December through May of 2023, you know, the average monthly job creation was 200 and just under 280,000. So a slowdown to 150,000 over the last three months. Yeah, that's a big slowdown. And that's why it's like, oh my God, is, that, is it going to continue slowing? We think that's just normalizing, right? And 150,000 jobs is, by the way, more than enough to keep up with population growth. Now, we did see the unemployment rate jump from 3.5 to 3.8%. But this is for, dare I say, good reasons. That's because more people came into the labor force. That typically happens only if workers are confident they can find jobs, right? Then they stay in the labor force as opposed to if we are in a weak labor market, like close to a recession, in a recession, what happens? Workers get discouraged. They stop looking for work. They assume to have left the labor force, right? So I think in a lot of ways, this was actually a pretty solid employment report pointing to basically normalization. Uh, we, we're almost near the end here, Sonu. I think it's really important for people to remember. Last year, we made 5 million jobs. We created 5 million jobs in our economy. 
That is not normal. Hey, we're making up for COVID, we're aware, but now we're on the other side of getting more normalized here. So just because you're gonna turn on TV and hear things are slowing, things are slowing, that's actually fairly normal. So with all that, this is that's this week's Facts versus Feelings, take five with Ryan and Sonu. Things aren't as bad as they seem, even though it is the worst month of the year. We'll see everybody soon, take care.